Hi everyone, I'm River. One night, my mom came into my room. Pack your bags, we need to move out of this house right now, she said. When I said, again? She replied, River, come on, get to it now. If we don't move out ASAP, you will have to come visit your parents in prison. This happens pretty regularly. My parents start a new business. After a while, they always mess it up. They either rip off their customers or borrow money from a bunch of people that they never pay back. We grab all our stuff, throw it into a truck, and move to another state before people come banging on our door. For example, last year they opened a dog hotel. People would leave their dogs there while traveling. When someone would bring in an expensive dog, like a Tibetan Mastiff or a Chow Chow, my dad would sell it online. You heard that right, my dad was selling other people's dogs. When the owners came to pick them up, he would lie and tell them their dog was either dead or had run away. When social media blew up with this, we packed up and left. Once, they opened up a second-hand clothing store in a small town. The business was great. It turned out that once a week, my mom was going to another town nearby. She was paying some kids there to steal clothes that people hung up in their backyards. You guessed it, right? Those were the clothes my mom was selling in the store. When one of the kids got caught and ratted her out, my parents were exposed. As always, we skipped town and moved to yet another state. It pains me to say this, but unfortunately, my parents are crooks, and both of them have the exact same personality, so they get along really well. They are always trying to cut corners with every new venture they start. That's why they end up doing illegal stuff. What's worse is that they can never make real money, so we're always broke. In two years, I'll be graduating high school. I need money to be able to afford a good college. When I talked to my parents about it, my dad said, forget about college, you'll start working with us when you finish high school. I said, Dad, I don't think what you're doing is right. I'm not going to be like you guys. And he got really mad at me. My mom screamed, you don't like what we do? Then you're moving out the moment you're done with school. Good luck taking care of yourself. My dad took it even further, saying, your mom's absolutely right, and we won't be taking care of you until then either. You better start looking for a job tomorrow. I'm never going to be like you. I will be an honest person and make money the right way. I yelled back and left. That night, I looked at job postings for hours. I applied for jobs that seemed like a good fit for me. In a couple of days, I started working at the reception desk of a small hotel. I went to work every day after school. One night when I got back from work, I saw a homeless man in front of our building. Normally, there are no homeless people in our neighborhood. He was staring at me. Can I help you, sir? Are you looking for someone? I asked. He said, is your name River? I did not expect that. Yes, how did you know that? I said, River, I recognize you from photos. I'm your grandfather, he said. Naturally, I was shocked. At first, I wasn't sure if he was lying or not, but after talking to him for a while, I was convinced that he really was my grandfather. He was my dad's dad. They'd been estranged for 20 years. My dad had told me his parents had died. Apparently, he had been lying about his dad. I gave my grandfather a hug. I'm sure my dad will be so happy to see you. Come on, let's go to our house, I said. But my grandfather didn't want to go there unannounced. I don't know how they will react. Will you go and ask them first? I really miss my son and my daughter-in-law. I'm here to make peace with them. I'd appreciate it if they would see me. I ran home. I told my parents that my grandfather was downstairs and told them everything we'd just talked about. Their expressions changed. My dad asked, are you sure it's him? How did he find us? It's definitely him. He misses you both so much. Let's go down and bring him up here, I replied. My parents looked at each other anxiously. My mom snapped, you think we'll just let a homeless guy come into our house? Go and tell him that we don't want to see him. I couldn't believe it. I was about to argue with them, but my dad hushed me. Streets are where he belongs. Tell that homeless man if he comes here again, I'll make him regret it, he yelled. I went downstairs in tears. There was nothing I could do. I told my grandfather what my parents had told me. He said sadly, really? I wasn't expecting this at all. I thought they would actually like to see me after 20 years. It started raining. I held my grandfather's arm. Forget about them. Let's get you a place to stay. I won't leave you here in the streets, I said. I took my grandfather to the hotel where I was working. I told the night manager about the situation. I asked him to deduct the cost of my grandfather's room from my uh -huh. salary. Then I put him up in a nice room. What happened between you and my parents? Why haven't you seen each other in 20 years? I asked. My grandfather started telling me the story. I used to own a big jewelry store. When your parents got married, I gave both of them jobs there. They were sales associates. I told them, get some experience first, then I'll make you partners. But they wanted to do their own thing. One night, they came to the store and stole all the jewelry. When I came to the store the next morning and saw that there was nothing left, I was in shock. 
I checked the footage from the security cameras and I saw that the thieves were my son and my daughter-in-law. I didn't go to the police because I didn't want them to end up in prison. I went bankrupt overnight. I started living on the streets because I lost everything. This story made me so sad. Unfortunately, these were the kinds of things you could expect from my parents. They don't want to see you because they feel guilty. Maybe they're afraid you want revenge, I suggested. My grandfather said, Maybe, but I came here to make peace with them. I'm still happy to be here because I found out what a wonderful granddaughter I have and gave me a hug. The next day, I stopped at a bakery. I got a little <laughs> cake and a single candle. It was my birthday. I was going to celebrate it with my grandfather. But when I arrived at the hotel, they told me he had left really early. I was so sad that he left without saying goodbye. During my shift, all I could think about was why he did this. After I finished working, I was walking to the bus stop. A luxury car stopped right next to me. When the passenger window rolled down, I was surprised to see my grandfather inside. My dear granddaughter, happy birthday. Do you want to come for a ride with me? He said. I hopped in. The last time I saw my grandfather, he was a homeless man. Now he looked rich. He said, I realize all this took you by surprise. I'll tell you everything. But first, allow me to give you a little birthday present. I found you and your family with help from private detectives. Thanks to their reports, I know it's your birthday today. After a short ride, we arrived at the airport. We drove straight to a runway. We got out of the car. There was a private jet right in front of us. The pilot and the crew were waiting. My grandfather said, Happy birthday, River. Please accept this gift. And I screamed, What? Grandpa, are you giving me a plane for my birthday? Are you rich? My grandfather patted me on the head. After your parents stole all the jewelry from my store, I really did go bankrupt and was homeless for two years. But I still knew the jewelry business quite well. An old friend of mine saved me from the streets and hired me as a consultant. I was traveling to Africa to buy diamonds straight from the mines. Eventually, I bought some shares in a mine. The investment paid off, and now I own five different diamond mines around the world. Everything was illuminated as my grandfather was telling me his story. But there was one more thing I was still curious about. Grandpa, why did you introduce yourself as a homeless man? If you had said you were rich, my parents would have definitely wanted to see you, I said. That's exactly why I didn't tell them. I've been diagnosed with cancer. Doctors say I barely have a year left. That's why I came to visit you all. I wanted them to know that I'd forgiven them. I just wanted them to tell me they regretted what they'd done. I was going to leave everything to them, but I had to test them to see if they were being sincere. That's why I hid the fact that I was a billionaire and pretended to be homeless. Unfortunately, they didn't want to see me. That's how I knew they hadn't changed at all. Therefore, I'm going to leave everything to my kind-hearted granddaughter. I only have one condition, though. You will not be giving your parents a single penny because they don't deserve it. They need to be punished for what they've done. We got into the car again. When we arrived at our building, my grandfather said, Will you please go tell your parents a billionaire wants to see them? I'm sure they'll come running. I went home and told my parents what had happened. They were stunned. Just like my grandfather had guessed, they practically ran downstairs. My grandfather was waiting in front of the building. My dad said, Daddy, you got us wrong. We love you so much. Please forgive us. My mom was shedding crocodile tears and saying, River is still so young. She can't take on this responsibility. I beg you to forgive us. Leave your inheritance to your family. But my grandfather had made up his mind. It's too late to talk about all this now. I gave you a chance, but I saw that neither of you had changed. I won't let you near my money. My mom tried a different strategy by turning to me. What do you think, River? Your grandfather is not being fair, right? Will you please tell him you are on our side, she said. But I agreed with my grandfather. I'm sorry, Mom. I wish you'd taken in that homeless man and apologized for what you did all those years ago. Then it would have all been fine, I replied. My dad got really mad. So ungrateful. We've been taking care of you for free for years. If you two are conspiring against us, then we are disowning you, he screamed. My mom was with my dad on this one, too. Do whatever you want. You're not our daughter anymore, she said. They turned their backs to us and went into the building. I was literally disowned, but I wasn't sad at all. They were already going to kick me out when I turned 18. I just had to leave home a little earlier. My grandfather smiled at me and said, Do you want to check out your new plane? We could celebrate your birthday with a nice dinner in Paris if you'd like, he said. I nodded. Since I was a billionaire now, I had to get used to my new life.